good evening welcome back to the channel um, before I do a little update on the uh, progress of the breeding it's doing pretty well I mean we've had problems with a couple of pairs but you know it's it is what it is um, we can't really control it because we don't have all the time with the birds you don't have the luxury of staying with them all the time work in partnership and juggling work with with pigeons is as hard going as it is but um i mean we've had a good hatch um we had a couple of eggs that didn't hatch but you know a pretty good ratio to youngsters um so we have about 20 youngsters in here so you know, i haven't mean, done really bad like that um we're still keeping pen pen 8 and pen 12 they're still a bit dodgy so uh, we've got to keep an eye on them really I mean what I'll do is right that head in there is barred up only because that cock there he loves to go in there and cause a ruckus so I'll just let let him out a sec I'll let her out or let open up the box I just observe them for a bit that's what I do normally when I come in from work Father's normally done all the work here just need to be done obviously replenish the water um, food etc so uh, yeah that cock there likes to go in bed box 8 and he likes to cause a ruckus like he did the other day he didn't break the eggs because I replaced them with pot eggs and I, fl and I just kept them underneath a pair that has two eggs or one baby and um, just basically let them sit on that egg for a couple of days while they sort themselves out. I came in after work one day and they were they were scrapping. Quite bad. That cock there, the, the dark cock, he's full of vigour, always at it he is. Um, uh, he was scrapping with Pen 12. So Pen 12 was in there. Obviously the eggs didn't smash because they were pot eggs. Um... So we've just decided to, to bar them up again. Um, so what we do is now, they'll alternately be, be let out. So one day pen eight will be, they're only sitting on eggs because they laid the first round, which is really, it's, it's a really strange story beyond this. They laid the first round. They laid two, they, she only laid one egg, which was weird. It was fertile. She was sitting on it, and then she stopped sitting on it, which was really weird. And then, and we noticed that the cock and hen were treading again. It's really strange, but we kept the egg and put it under uh, pen two, their feeders. And um, then they went down on another round. Um, she laid two eggs, and she's sitting on them. They're both they're, they're both fertile. They're due to hatch out next week. So um, obviously, to to stop any chance of her eggs getting smashed or their eggs getting smashed. What we'll do is we'll bar them up for one day. They'll have, obviously, um, the hangover, the the, uh, the front drinker cups, and they'll have a full galley pot of food. A full galley pot normally holds around about eight ounces, um, so it's plenty, and plenty enough for them to have food in there all day. And um, then the next day, Pen 12, they've got two babies. Um, they will have... They'll be blocked in, and then pen eight will be let out all day. So they basically we're just alternating them. So the only time that we actually have um, full control visually over them is weekend. So we can sit here and watch them, observe them, and um, see how they get on. But within an hour or so, they always end up scrapping. We've got to persevere with these two cocks. The, the hens we bred ourselves, um, the grandchildren of our principal pigeons. Um, but the hen, the cocks that we actually bought in this year or last year, um, so we got to persevere with them. We paid good money for them, so we obviously, you know, which is the really strange thing is they chose the boxes way before pairing up, and they were happy in them. But that cock just really wants to go in there and cause a ruck next door. He wants both boxes. You get some like that, which is you know, it's not good. Um, so like he's gone into his his own box now, but. Just you, just to minimise or completely eradicate the risk of beating young ones and smashed eggs. So they'll be they'll be blocked in. 
and uh, they'll have a full galley pot and the water will be replenished and the food will be replenished every day during the day if needs be um, as my dad will, father will do it um, if he's here um, and yesterday we had a bit of an issue as well um, so we've wrong most of them um, yesterday I just came in from work and had a look see if see if dad's wrong anymore if father's wrong anymore birds and uh, I checked in box 11 and uh, the young one was dead was dead stiff as a board scratches all over his back um, cuts all over his back so it obviously been trampled on it was fresh um because the young one the day out the day before was absolutely fine feeding absolutely fine nothing wrong with them <coughs> excuse me <coughs> but the uh the young one was obviously been tra obviously been trampled on um as i said cuts all over its back all over its head dead so um yesterday i was in here for a good couple of hours I had a late tea because of it because I, I wanted to find out who was the culprit um, <clears throat> so box 11 is a home acoustic clock with tutti frutti tutti frutti is a brass pen and hen and next door to her in pen 7 is tutti frutti's daughter <coughs> excuse me um, we bred her ourselves she was a late bred and uh, we've had her for a couple of years but we decided obviously to you know give them a go give her a go in the in the in the race uh, in the stock loft she's not given us any problems before absolutely fine finding a box and navigating away to a box with a cock the cock's been in there for since he was beat since he's been here so 2018 no trouble with the cock bird so i just watched and see what was happening i took the young one out obviously the dead young one put it in the bin um it wasn't wrong so uh we, um, I just stood back and watched for a bit. And uh, I seen the daughter of Tutti Frutti go into Tutti Frutti's box and fight. There was no young one in there. Um, so I, I grabbed the hen and, and I wanted to see if she did it again. So I put it on the floor, put her on the floor and stood back again. And she did it again. So uh, she's got young ones also in pen, in, in, in pen seven. She's got young ones in there. So today, all day, she's been barred up with a cock. She's been barred up. She's had food, obviously, access to food and water for her babies. Um, and there's been no problem in pen at 11. Because what we've done is, um, because we want young ones around about the same age, we just basically let her foster. Obviously, she's carrying crop milk as well from her, the baby that died. Um, but got trampled on. So we fostered a baby underneath her so she wouldn't have to go down on another round so we can have babies all around the same age. Um, so that's that. But yes, yeah, it's, it's frustrating. It really is because pigeons are very, very intelligent birds. Like, ridiculously intelligent. I've seen programs where pigeons will... Um, like you get the toddler toys where they have to put a triangle in a triangle box and stuff like that. Pigeons can actually do that and you know pick, make out shapes and you know they're intelligent. They fly from hundreds and hundreds of miles, um, fly back home, blah blah blah. But they'll fly into the wrong box from two yards away, which is it's just strange. It really is. Obviously, you've got to take you know take take into consideration that the hen's not been in this loft before. So it might take a bit of time, you know, to her get used to it. But she was absolutely fine on eggs. Um, but, you know, it's just one of those things, I guess. So, uh, yeah, that's that. We still got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. There'll be twenty when they hatch. So there's eighteen young ones in here. Um, as I said a, <clears throat> before in a previous update, I don't really like going in there and, and handling them like that because you know it's less stress on the on the uh, on the on the parents when you're going in there and handling them and stuff. Just don't like doing it. Once they're wrong, when they start getting feathered up, then then we start going in there and you know making sure that they get used to the hand sort of thing, you know. 
So they're on breeding mix. They've had, um, they get home of form as well. They get grit and minerals. In the water, we've got apple cider vinegar. So we usually do about 10, 10 mil per liter of water. That's a 2.5 liter. Sorry, we have some five pint drinker. So um, yeah, about 15 mil, 20 mil. Um, so yeah, it's just basic apple cider vinegar is good for the gut. Um, acidic environments in the gut, not not many. I say that Germans don't survive in it, but they don't like living in the acidic environments. So environments. So they're on apple cider vinegar, just a couple of days a week, fresh water. We do give them a multivitamin now and again. Um, and we've all, we've all also had them on the Colonelisk uh, three four one, which is the. Uh, see that cock's not supposed to be in that box. We'll see what happens now. We got them on the 341. So the 341 is uh, for canker and coxie. Uses a preventative, really. We've used Connolly's products for a while, um, especially during breeding season. Don't really want to ram antibiotics. We've obviously treated them beforehand, before pairing up. We cankered a coxie them, got them tested first to see if they had any ailments, but they didn't have any coxie, which was good. They had a zero count of coxie, which should be in all of your pigeons, no coxie whatsoever, because coxie is a parasite um do not want that in your birds canker is always in your birds 24 7 no matter what you treat them with canker is a natural um flagellate that's good uh you know that's there in the immune system to pass on down to the young ones so they get a resistance a, you know a certain amount of resistance to canker um but you don't want to be treating them for that for that sort of ailment during breeding. It's always um, beforehand. I mean, you can give them uh, be between rounds, give them a, a canker treatment. Um, I read that in the Pigeon Bible, which is the, um, the book by um, Dr. Colin Walker, I think he's called. Brilliant book. Absolutely fantastic insight to medications and the general um, health of pigeons, etc. Um, so you can give them a canker treatment in between rounds, but we don't really like doing that, to be honest. So we use Connolly's products as a preventative, really. It's really good for the um, the 335, which is a good one. That's for the young bird sickness. We've used that in the past. It turns around, it turns them around pretty quick. Um, but with the, uh, the 341, we added to that as well, the 343. Mix them both together, which is a um, circovirus and... Um, secondaries, obviously loose droppings and stuff like that, but uh, they've been absolutely fine. So yeah, they've, they're on breeding mix. The babies are a decent size now. I'll show you. I can show you. I'm not going to handle it, but I can show you inside the box. Um, she's sitting on a baby there, if you can see. That's the that's a Gabby hen. She won our first ever race. Um, coming back into the sport, she got a uh, first club second fed um she did very well we should have kept on racing her really but we kept the back um but we just use her for a feed and now she won't be going anywhere obviously sentimental value but she got some good breeding in her she's uh md evans gabby van der Beely from uh, dal roderick up in uh up in wales so uh, yeah they're sitting on you she's obviously you can see that there she's sitting on young ones well, one, she's a single rear, but that baby isn't even hers. So that baby belongs to the dark cock that's down there driving his ass off and the hen that's in there sitting. So he's a Herman Cooster and she's the granddaughter of Rambo and uh, the direct daughter of Boulder's Brass, which is uh, a good racer for us. And now he's, he's breeding the winners for us. So, you know, all good. Anyway, I hope your breeding season's going well. Obviously, you're going to come across a few blips and, and fights and stuff like that and smashed eggs now and again, but it's it's just, it's just difficult, obviously, trying to cast an eye over them all the time when, you, when you're not here. So, uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, the weather has been absolutely atrocious again. So, outside, it's just been, been at work today. It's, it's calmed down now, but it's been absolutely chucking it down. Rain pissing down all day. Um can't get the birds out in the rain like pissing down rain it's all right with fine rain but when it's pissing down you can't do nothing with them um and it's been going on for weeks now it's just it's just horrendous and I'm sick and fed up of it now all of us are all, all pigeon fanciers 
um, and obviously working it's no good either so uh, anyway I'll let you guys go um, see you on the next update um, take care of yourselves and most of all set every update enjoy your birds guys cheers